Oh, hey there, how are you doing? Today <laughs> I will show you how to play Bags by Claro. This song was requested by all these people, thank you all so much for your comments. Yeah, first of all, uh, I went to a Poon Weeper concert a few days ago where I met some of you guys, which was really awesome. So, if you ever happen to see me in real life, don't hesitate to say hello or something. I really enjoyed it, so thank you so much for that. Anyways, I will show you how to play uh, bags by Claro. I will first show you how to play the chords and I will explain the strumming pattern in a bit more detail. Then I will also talk a bit about some power chords that she is using, some more theoretical stuff maybe you could call it. And then I will show you the second guitar taps of the song that you can hear in the choruses. So that's really that. Follow me on Instagram. The link is in the description there. You can sometimes choose which song are the next. So that's nice. And also I want to give a huge thank you to Kevin and to Jennifer for becoming a patron on my Patreon page. Thank you so much for your wonderful support in this way. I think that's really everything I wanted to say. Now we can get into the song. So the song is just in standard tuning. You don't have to use a capo or anything like that. So we can go directly into the song.
So as you can see that's how to play the song, nothing too weird going on, only 3 chords really. The strumming pattern is also quite straightforward, it's only down strokes really so. Like that. As you might have heard, I also tried to add in a bit of variety of sometimes doing an upstroke as well. But yeah, I do really recommend you to play around with that, especially when you're playing alone. It might become a bit much of the same the whole time, the chords. So you don't have a band to add this variety, so you can add this variety in your strumming patterns to change it up a bit. Then the other thing that might be a bit tricky with the strumming pen is you hear this small, it's not really a slide, but she's playing the the F chord shortly over here. So yeah, the timing of this F chord might be a bit tricky, so I will play the chord progression slowly, especially in the end, so you can see what's going on. So it's just really the last note before you're getting into the yeah to the first chord again so like that but uh, listen to the song slowly and you'll get the hang of it so that's all about that now i wanted to talk a bit about the power chords or the the way she's playing the chords how she does it and what it means and why it sounds nice and all that jazz first of all as you can hear she's really playing the the chords in a quite a bassy way so usually playing more bass notes than higher notes so only the a and the, the e the a and the d and the g string so like that and sometimes she's only it sounds like she's only playing a power chord so an f sharp 5 and a a sharp 5 and a g sharp 5 but i wanted to talk a bit about these five chords these f sharp fives and why they are so interesting and they are interesting because i also talked about this in my last video you have major and minor chords you have lots of chords but a great distinction between them is the major and the minor chord so this is a major chord f sharp major this is a f sharp minor chord and you can hear quite the difference between them what's usually said is that the f sharp my major or the major chord sounds quite happy and the F sharp minor or the minor chord I should say sounds a bit more sad but when you're playing a 5 chord so an F sharp 5 you're really leaving the note out that makes the distinction between the major and the minor chord because the F sharp major and the F sharp minor and every minor and major both have the first and the fifth chord of the scale that is in so the F sharp has the first note of the F sharp scale and the fifth note of the F sharp scale the F sharp chord so so that's the same in the major and the minor chord but the the the, the third note of the the scale really differentiates the major and the minor chord because in the major chord the third note of the made of the major scale is used and in the minor chord the flattened third of the major scale is used so with the f sharp that's really the the a sharp and the a so uh, i'm sorry if it gets a bit difficult I will try to explain a bit more simple now. The note that makes a major chord, a major chord, and a minor chord, a minor chord, isn't played in the F5 chord, in the F sharp 5 chord, or any 5 chord. So that's interesting because you don't really have this distinction anymore between a happy and a sad chord, but you have this quite bassy, rocky, uh, sturdy sound of an f sharp 5 and that's it's sort of a subjective thing as well i don't have this from anybody but i think that's what also gives the the, the power chords these five chords that's also that are used a lot in punk and in rock it gives it this sturdy and this more maybe more rhythm more rhythmic than melodic feeling i hope you get what i mean you can use these five chords to give it a bit more sturdy a bit more rough a bit more uh, my english vocabulary isn't well enough to explain exactly which word I'm looking for but I hope you understand what I mean you can hear quite the difference between and and so it's more rocky and more 
badass sound. <laughs> you could say it because it it, it leaves the the third note out, out of the scale, which should make it sound more happy or more sad. So yeah, that's that's what I wanted to say about that. I hope I'm a bit clear and you enjoy this. If you have questions about it, leave it in the comments. To sum it all up in a normal way without too much um, theoretical stuff, the F the five chords really interesting to play around with because they give this more rocky, sturdy feeling than a normal major and minor chord. And that happens because the five chords are only playing two notes of a chord and the a normal major and minor is playing three notes of the chord really. So yeah. That's what I wanted to say about that. I hope that's clear. Now I will show you how to play the tabs of the second guitar in the choruses. So that's how to play that. It's not too difficult, I think, you, ha you have to get used to it, but it's played quite high, so... The nice thing about it is because it's played quite high on the fretboard, the frets are quite close to each other, they are much more smaller than over here, as you might notice, so it's not too difficult to move your fingers around a lot, but yeah, you do have to use your pinky, but try to move your fingers as less as possible because then you can move quickly I will show you how I do it so for example over here you're really playing a sort of chord over here which the which you could you could also do this but that's just really unnecessary, you can also... Yeah, you, you can use your fingers optimally in that way. There's also different ways to play it, of course, but that's how I like to do it. But it might help. And also what really helps is to play the song at a lower speed first. You can change it in the YouTube, in the settings down here. You can also do that on the original song itself, so not only on this video. But yeah, that might help you out a lot, because it helped me out. A lot as well <laughs> a lot so that's really everything i wanted to say about this song uh, i hope everything was clear don't forget to follow me on instagram the link is in the description and i really hope to see you the next time thank you so much